Kramer's Drug Store in Wistful Vista is noted for two things. It's wonderful chocolate fudge and the fact that it hasn't got any. But today the sale is on. And here, just home with a bright big bag of the confection, we find Molly of Fibber McGee and Molly. Hey, McGee. You'll never guess what I got at Kramer's Drug Store. I hope you didn't give me any of that quick-drying fountain pen ink of Kramer's. That stuff is terrible. Why do you say that? Well, you know how I like to take my old-fashioned fountain pen with me when I go on trips? On my last trip to Peoria, I had some of that Kramer's ink with me. You did, huh? Well, you know how you shake your pen at a hotel wall to see if the ink is flowing right in your pens? Yeah. Well, by the time this ink hit the wall, it was already dried. Rattled off the wallpaper like you're throwing buckshot. Oh, that's too bad. But that's not what I was going to tell you. I wanted to tell you that Kramer's Drugstore had a really special sale. Oh, that organization's always got a great big sale. Kramer's idea of a $1 sale is to give you four bucks back for a fiver. Yeah, but this is different. This was a special... Special sales at Kramer's are just that he gives you two of something you don't need with something you gotta have for half again what you would have paid if you had gone where you wanted to go had it not been raining outside. Now, Derry, will you please let me talk? Huh? Trying to tell you something sometimes is like laying down on the grass and trying to play badminton with hailstones as they're falling out of the sky. Well, I'm sorry, kiddo. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead and talk. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to tell you that... You know what I hate is a guy that just won't let another guy talk. Well, I know what that's like. It's egotism. That's what it is. You know what one guy thinks that what he's got to say is so much better than what the other guy's going to say? Yeah. He won't just keep his big mouth shut. Are you finished? Can I talk now? What I want to tell you is that Kramer's had this really great sale on... <sighs> McGee, will you please let me finish? That wasn't me. That was the doorbell. Oh, I'm sorry. Come in! Mrs. McGee? Yes? I'm your neighbor next door. Oh, it's a little old lady who lives in a shoe. She has so many kids, she doesn't know what to do. Pardon? You're the mother of Tina and Tiny and Tana and Tony and... Yeah, 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 whatever. Hey, if we were to leave town for a few days, could you watch our boxer? Oh, sure, sis. I'm very fond of dogs. Oh, it's not a dog. It's our cousin, Punchy McClatchy. Thank you very much. My goodness, McGee, did you ever hear of Punchy McClatchy? Sure, sure. Six feet of fighting scar tissue that couldn't battle his way out of a hairnet. <laughs> Known in prize fighting circles as the Waltz King. He's gone into more dives than an MP in Paris. Wrote up a will, leaving his jaw to the Libby Owens Glass Company. <laughs> and what were you saying earlier about Kramer's? You got me interested. Oh, yeah. Well, this morning I woke up with this terrific desire for some good old-fashioned chocolate fudge. So fudge? I... Well, why didn't you say so? I'll whip you up a batch of fudge, the finest you ever did see. The old-fashioned kind. Oh, that's really sweet of you, McGee, but you don't need to because I already went Oh, to... your wish is my command. You ask for fudge, you're hungry for fudge, and fudge you will have. Let's see, what do you need to make fudge? Um, cocoa, eggs. Give me the phone, will you? I need to call the market. Well, okay. Here you go, McGee, but really, this is yeah. unnecessary. You really don't have to do this. Hello, Martin's Market and Meat? McGee here. Mark my words, it's her. Who? Mert. Uh... How's every little thing, Mert? You don't say. Your married sister, eh? In an interesting condition. Ah, uh, that's nice. No, no, she was studying ballet and got her foot caught behind her neck. Oh. What was that, Mert? Yeah, yeah, I was just calling because I needed to order some eggs to make some fudge, but as it turns out, I don't think you actually need eggs to make fudge, so call the whole thing off. Goodbye. Well, uh, let's see. The laughing scratch on the, on the kitchen, baby. For the last time, McGee, you really don't need to do this. This probably won't be the last time, Tootsie. When you fling a fang into the fabulous fudge I'm going to make, you'll realize why the chief of the Waldorf is a man. That's pronounced chef, dearie. It is? Yes. Well, when I was in the army, I cooked the mess of baked beans for the commander in chef, and it was so... Chief. I cooked some baked beans for the commander in chief that were so good he wanted to know the name of the chief who cooked them. And chef. The chef that cooked them. And so I told the commander in chef, I said that... Chief! Oh, babe. Okay, well, I'm going to need a saucepan. Where's the saucepans at? Let's see. Um, uh, oh, here, here we are. Let's see. 
Mickey, that's a fry pan. So what? Have you ever tried any fried fudge? It's the frying that brings out all the delicate flavors. And every... What are we keeping this thing for? That's a colander. Well, it's full of holes. I only want the best stuff in any kitchen of mine. Throw this thing out the window. Certainly. I'm gonna need a double boiler. McGee, what do you need a double boiler for? Well, I always boil my fudge twice. Let's see, I'm gonna need some salt, pepper, paprika, um... Boy, this fudge is sure gonna be good. Look at that rich brown color. Yep, like the back of an old boxing glove. Boy, I get a lot of that smooth, creamy consistency. <laughs> this stuff is going to turn out to be just like velvet. Yes, one bite and you'll have a long nap. <laughs> if this stuff turns out to be as good as I suspect, I might as well put this on the market. Fibber's Fine Fudge. Oh my. I can just see the billboards now. Feeling foul, folks? Why fret, fume, or fuss? Feed your face with a fistful of Fibber's Fine Fudge. If feeling low with work or treasury, drop in on Fibber's Fine Fudgery. <laughs> That's great, kid. I'll make the name McGee anonymous with fine food everywhere. Do you mean synonymous, dearie? It starts with a sin, and if you think I'm whistling Dixie, you're tone deaf. Well, I'll have my fine fudge in every drugstore or supermarket around the whole country. Why, I'll just... Oh, it's Mayor La Trivia. Out here in the kitchen, Your Honor. Hello, Molly, McGee. Hey, Latrivia, have a seat. And watch a master confectioner confect a confection. What witch's brew are you concocting there, McGee? If you're working on synthetic rubber, don't go any further. Tires that smell like that would set the automotive industry back 75 years. He's making fudge, Your Honor. Oh, fudge? What was that last wisecrack? I merely said, oh, fudge, indicating with my usual perspicacity that I grasped the situation. Oh. Uh, may I make a suggestion? Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Well, every time I drop in for a friendly chat, we seem to conclude with some unseemly conversational brawl. Let us for once not get into an argument. It's okay with me, the Triv. I'm a peaceful citizen. I can get along with anybody. Well, now, isn't that nice? Ah, splendid. People who go around with chips on their shoulder shouldn't. Ah, well, let's just leave my father out of this, the Triv. Your father? What did I say about your father? His father was a carpenter, Mr. Mayor. And just because an honest cabinet maker has a few chips on his shoulder doesn't give you the- Oh, I was speaking rhetorically, McGee. I, I didn't mean actual chips. I, I just meant- You mean my father used phony chips? Well, just a minute here, the trivia. There aren't any more honest people than carpenters and- I didn't say a word about carpenters. You brought that up. No, he brought McGee up. No, I mean an honest chippener. A carpet honester. I mean when a man has a chip on his father. Stop shouting at my wife, Latrivia. No, I was not shouting. I was not shouting at your wife. Well, who were you shouting at, Mayor? At your husband. Speak up, Latrivia, speak up. If you've got something to say, out with it. Stop mumbling. I was only trying to... I, I was only attempting to... I was hoping just for once... Don't you like me? Well, of course he likes you, Mr. Latrivia. You're a fine chap, Latrivia. Inclined to fly off the handle like a cheap hatchet every once in a while. But a fine gentleman at that. Thank you. Now, before I leave, may I tell you something I've never said to anyone else? Well, of course you can, Mr. Mayor. What is it, old man? Simply this, McGee. You've dropped that horrible mess of fudge on your shirt and pants. And on you, it looks good. Why on earth do you suppose he doesn't like carpenters? Probably just a frustration, I imagine. Probably wanted to be a carpenter when he was younger, but couldn't because he always puts the wrong construction on everything. Well, that may well be. Oh, McGee, you spilled that all over the floor. Oh, uh, that's okay. I got plenty left. I made a couple. I made a double batch of this stuff. <laughs> Hello, is anybody home? Out here in the kitchen, Mrs. Wilcox. Oh, hi, Junior. Hello, pal. Hello, Molly. Hello, Mrs. Wilcox. Do you like fudge? Is that what he's making there? Yes! No. Am I to misconstrue that as a reflection on my cooking, Junior? The shoe fits, pal. You can mock a mile without an argument. Gee, I wish you had a copy of my cookbook. 
your cookbook. I never knew you were interested in cooking, Mrs. Wilcox. Family recipes, are they? Oh, I stole them from here and there. You know the old saying, if you steal from one author, it's plagiarism. If you steal from everybody, it's research. And mine is research. Well, uh, gotta go. It was nice to see you guys. Hey, 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 don't you want to stay and have some fudge? No, no thanks. I always thought you had quite the sweet tooth, Mrs. Wilcox. Well, I do, but my sweet tooth takes advice from my wisdom tooth. So long, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Wow, imagine Mrs. Wilcox an author. Ah, Pshaw. All you need to become an author these days is an idle summer and a publisher with too big of an income tax return. Well, setting aside that fertile subject for another day, dearie, uh, why don't you step aside? I want to mop up that spilled fudge. Okay. Well, I still have to beat this st stuff some more. You know, that baking soda just doesn't blend in very well. Baking soda? You didn't put baking soda in there, did you? Why, sure. It's a baking soda that gives it that light and fluffy feel. It's the vinegar that adds that sharp and zesty snap. Vinegar? McGee, you don't put everything into making fudge. Oh, well, I didn't use everything. Look at that stuff over there on the shelf I didn't use. I didn't use any celery salt or onion flakes or horse... Horseradish! Hey, what am no, I... No, no, You're not going to put horseradish in the fudge. Okay. You know, this is kind of a mess. I, I think I'll, I will take it out on the deck and, and whip it for a while. It's really warm out, so I'm going to leave my sweater here as well. Okay. He'll be just a minute and I'll be right back. All right, well, I'll wait right here. Oh, it's been raining out here. Huh. Well, I bought a little goat, and his name was Jack, but I got so homesick I had to give him back. Oh, hi, Mr. McGee. Oh, hey, Tana. You're teeny sister, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, but don't, no, don't get splashed. This stuff is hot in more ways than one. Oh. Uh, have a seat. Oh, thank you. What you making, Mr. Hal? What you making, Hal? What you... Well, I'm making fudge, sis. And if you're quiet like a good kid, I'll let you help me lick the pan. Oh boy, gee, goody, I love fudge. You do, huh? Hmm? I said you do, huh? Do what? Love fudge. I know. Well, take a gander at this, sis. Beautiful, eh? Bet you never saw any fudge that color before. I bet you I've never seen anything that color before. Well, making fudge is a fine art, sis. Mm-hmm. Did I ever tell you why they call it fudge? Oh, <laughs> no. Well, hundreds of years ago, even before The Simpsons was on the TV, there lived a family of little elves in the great big forest. You know what an elf is, sis? Oh, yes. My daddy is an elf. He goes down to the elf club every day. No, no I didn't say elks. I said elves. Brownies, gnomes, pixies, leprechauns, elves. I mean, elves. Okay. So anyway, one day, the chief of the elves, a little fellow named Dagduff, went for a beetleback ride in the woods. Well, he fell off his beetle, and he got lost. He wandered around, getting hungrier and hungrier. And then he wandered upon a place where some human beings had been having a picnic. How did you know he made beans been there, mister? How did he? Well, the grass was all torn up. The trees had initials carved all over them. There were c c cans, broken glass, an old newspaper, you know, stuff like that laying around there. Oh. Nobody makes a mess like that except for human beings. Oh. So, Little Egg Duff went scrounging around looking for something to eat, and he found a little morsel of this brown candy. And he ate it. And it was delicious. So he looked around and he ate some more. And soon he had enough energy and strength to walk all the way home again with no problems. Oh boy, gee, goody! So when he got home, he told everybody the story, and of course, everyone wanted to try this amazing stuff. So being a smart little elf, Little Egg Duff got himself a bee, and had the bee bring him some honey, and then he milked a few milkweed plants for some milk, and made the finest batch of fudge you ever did see. Where did he get the chocolate, Mr. Huh? Well, he, he got it from the... He, he got it from from the beetle cocoa... But, 
Well, he got it all right. That's the important part. So anyway, all the other little elves were so excited and so happy with Egg Duff, and they loved this stuff so much, you know what they did. Sure. Huh? They called it fudge on account of being Egg Duff's for backwards. What? Well, I've got to get going now. So long, mister. Why, wow, of all the little point stealers I ever did see, I still say those girls are midgets. Ah! You okay? <sighs> Back to work on this fudge. Well, I had a little donkey and his name was Pete. Snuggled up the people and it kicked him in the teeth. Oh! Heavenly days, McGee! Aren't you about done cooking that fudge? Not quite. I had to boil it over again. Why? Couldn't taste the mint sauce. Mint sauce? This is going to be horrible. No, 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 Mommy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Have me that vanilla over there, will you? <sighs> Certainly, sir. Here you are. Thank you. Spiky! That ought to do it. I should certainly hope so. I haven't smelled that much vanilla since I walked by the cheap guys at my high school prom. Come in! Who is it? It's Dr. Campbell, Molly. Where are you at? We're out of the kitchen. Come on up. Wow, wow, isn't this a happy domestic little scene? You look great in that apron, McGee. <laughs> the only difference between you and Rachel Ray is you look like the sweetest chef. He's making a batch of fudge, Doctor. That smells swell. Let me stir, McGee. All right, well, you can stir for five, and then I'll stir for five. How's that? Well, goodness, Doctor. I think we have an apron for you, too. Here you are. It's like the Hilton sisters at work. You interested in cooking, Doc? I love it. You ever had any my guinea hen Maryland with sauce gamble? No, no, I've never been in Maryland, Doc. Oh. I've got this great recipe for barbecue meatballs. You see, what you do is you first you take a pig. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you should try my spinach ring. And uh, my salami cacciatore. It's, you know, if you've never tasted it, it's the best. <laughs> First, you take your dry sherry. No, no, no. I never use dry sherry, Doc. Always wet sherry. Am I in the way here, boys? You know, I can just as well go out on the porch and read a book. No, no, Molly. You stay right here. Hey, uh, Fever, isn't this just about done? It's uh, getting hard. Oh, well, you just take a little drop of it and drop it in a cup, and if it forms a little bead, it's just done. Let me get that. Here we go. Try this. Hmm. Very interesting. Sank like a mother's heart at Willie's first haircut. Well, it's done. Here, let me scrape it out into this pan. Whew. Boy, that's kind of like a marvelous there, McGee. That's the only purple and green fudge I've ever seen. Well, thanks for helping, Doc. You can have the first taste when it's all cool. No, no, your recipe. You have the first bite. Oh no, you're the guest. You just try it first. Uh, let's compromise. Uh, Molly, you get the first no, bite. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, uh, Molly, I made this fudge just for you because you came home and said you were hungry for fudge. I slammed over a stone and made this fudge just for you. All right, boys, you need to get out of my kitchen. I gotta clean up. I haven't seen so many dirty pans since the Elks put on their last minstrel show. Well, all right, Molly. Come on, McGee. I'm going to tell you about my recipe with about venison. Well, I want to tell you about my recipe for pineapple upside down cupcakes. First, you take a pineapple and you turn it upside down, and then you just... Ah, uh, there goes a good kid. Two good kids, as a matter of fact. Too good to be on the receiving end of what I have in mind when I look around this wreck of a kitchen. Well, but now, to dump out this murder mystery... Oof. There we go. And put this where they won't find it. And find that 
fudge I bought at Kramer's Grocery. Alright, just put that on a plate. There we go. There. I'll never know the difference. Three lives saved. All right, boys, come and get it. Ah, uh, the patter of little feet. Oh, well, that didn't take long to cool, did it? Well, certainly not. I had sense enough to drop a couple ice cubes in it last time I boiled it. Hey, this looks wonderful, Molly. It sure changes color once it cools, doesn't it? It sure does. That's the finest plate I've ever seen of goodies. And with these astigmatic orbs, McGee, you're wonderful. <laughs> I told you would be okay when it cooled. Here, have a piece, Doc. Thanks. Molly? Thank you. Mmm, my gosh, it's delicious. Most finest fudge I've ever ate. It's simply grand, McGee. <laughs> Glad you like it, folks. Make you some anytime you like. That sure is a great recipe I made up for this fudge here. Mmm. Mm. And you know the most miraculous thing? No. What? When it cools, it's even got nuts in it. Mm. Hey Molly, that fudge all gone? Mm, I just finished the last piece of it, dearie. Okay. Well, just earlier you were telling me something that you got at Kramer's Drugstore. What was that? Let me think. I had it on the tip of my tongue a moment ago. Oh well. Good night. Good night, dearie.